Hi. Hello. It's Monday. It's a new week. It's time to get newsy. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Hope everything is golden and bright and sunny. Because we've got some newsy juice to get up into your mouth. Brain? Brain. That's the word. That's how we're going to do it. And then we'll go into trailer time afterwards as well. What do we got going? The chat's really into it. They really want the newsy juice in their mouth. Everyone. Very excited about it. Let's jump straight to the news and get out of this as fast as possible. Video Games Chronicle currently holds the top story, according to r slash games for the day. Game grading firm Wata's co-founder is accused of selling a large numbers of its own games. Wata's policy is for employees not to sell games in case of fraud or conflict of interest. One of the uh, co-founders of the game grading company, Wata, has been accused of selling Wata graded games for high prices on eBay. Great. Uh, let's see here. Journalist Seth Abramson from Proof. Is that, an, I guess Proof is a place? Proof? He's a sub stacker. I think sub stack is like paid news for, I, I don't know. Let's not get into that. Anyways. He reports that uh, while clearing boxes at his house, he discovered a note included with a game he purchased from eBay in the summer. The seller's note to him, or sorry, the seller's note told him to email Mark Haspel at Redacted for more games. Abramson realized that he had purchased a game from Mark Haspel, one of the co-founders of WADA, then looked at his previous purchases and realized he'd bought three in total. Looking further into Haspel's email, eBay activity. Abramson discovered that, according to his claim, Espo was running a significant side business selling games his company graded. How does this just come to light? You know? According to Abramson, Espo is trading on eBay under the name M asterisk S asterisk H. And at the time of the article's publication, was selling 74 water graded Atari 2600 games a total value of $46,000. Here are some of the games. We got a Miss Pac-Man. We got a Rampage. We got a Crystal Cra Castles. We got a Tron Deadly Disc. I don't know if I would ever buy one of these. Of these games, uh, only one of them had water grade lower than 9.0, and none of them had a seal rating any lower than A+, meaning practically all of them were what what uh, were what WADA considered investment grade. <laughs> Snake oil salesman. Is this like, is, it, I, is this a big deal that I'm just not seeing? Is it the idea that they're grading these games high and then making profit off of it? It's like, a big deal. I'm not necessarily into the grading game or anything. Grading wise, cards, games, whatever. It's conflict of interest means the grading can't be trusted. True. But it was already a little bit funny to trust a grading of a company for a supposed value of something. Then again, you could probably extrapolate this into a bigger conversation on what money actually is. So, yeah, that's not great. It's not great. Here's a fun story. After five years, chat, No Man's Sky has reached mostly positive on Steam's review system. I think when that game debuted, it was at like 70,000. It was 
extremely negative or mostly negative or something like that. And now five years later, they have turned it around and hit mostly positive. That is wild. That's a, that's a feel good story. It's also a weird thing that we're putting any value on a rating system, which was probably very easily manipulated to begin with. But if it's a feel good story or story, we'll let it be a feel good story. And uh, congrats to the old Hello Games folks. It's a great game now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that Final Fantasy 15 car is coming back to Final Fantasy 14 for any fans of either game in the chat or the video. It'll be here on September 13th. You can see this right here. Is the event. I think you also can get, uh, yeah, you get the Lucian's uh, armor and stuff like that, which is uh, Prince Noctis's armor, if you really want it. Yeah, right here. You also get the hairstyle, unless you're a bunny, and then you don't get the hairstyle. Oh, I might get that card. I might get that card. Yeah, armor, of course, of course. Card is 200,000 K MJP. Well, I've got 4 million, so I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. Uh, so this is the big story, at least that I saw floating around over the weekend. The president of Tripwire Interactive made a tweet over the weekend which has uh, landed him in let's just say political waters since the news is supposed to remain unbiased but this guy's a complete prick <laughs> uh, he tweeted out the following uh, which I will now read. He said, uh, proud of hashtag U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of this issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. And then it just, uh, you know, as one would expect, he got pretty destroyed on Twitter. A handful of people have pulled out of uh, playing their games and supporting their games. Um, one of those companies is uh, Shipwright Studios. Uh, they tweeted out this statement right here. Uh, while well, your politics are your own, the moment you make them a matter of public discourse, you entangle all of those working for you and with you. We've worked closely and alongside the talented and passionate developers at Tripwired, uh, Tripwire and your partners for the last three plus years. We know it's difficult for our employees to speak up or act out in these scenarios, and they may feel not comfortable to speak their minds. It is regrettable, but we feel it would be doing ourselves, your employees, your partners, and the industry as a whole a disservice to allow this pattern to continue without comment. We started Shipwright with the idea that it was finally time to put our money where our mouth is. We cannot, in good conscience, continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our existing contracts effective immediately. For those that don't know, Shipwright Studios is the studio behind... I gotta look this up. Boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -boo. What do they make? What do they make? They make uh, or have worked on Mortal Shell, Scavengers, uh, Chivalry 2, Maneater, uh, Spark, 
Legends of Aria, The Outbreak. Handful. Handful of them. Uh, and in general, just like a pretty big falling out of most things Tripwire. Uh, for those that don't know, Tripwire is the same studio that make Killing Floor. They were also involved in, I believe, publishing Chivalry 2. Um, I don't know or I have not seen any comment about uh, Chivalry 2 devs discussing this. Uh, but they are the publisher, so I would suspect that they will probably have some sort of uh, comment on the situation as I've seen a pretty big outcry of people removing uh, Tripwire games uh, from their Steam platform and all that stuff. Uh, oh, here's a Torn Banner tweeted out. Thank you for that, chat. Torn Banner Studios, which is the studio uh, who created Chivalry 2, made this statement uh, yesterday morning. And says, uh, or say, we do not share the opinion expressed in a recent tweet by the president of Tripwire, publisher of Chivalry 2. This perspective is not shared by our team, nor is it reflected in the games we create. The statement stands in opposition to what we believe about women's rights. Uh, it doesn't have, uh, I figured this would have a little bit more traction. I think most people are still going to continue to uh, not... play it but yeah i suppose we'll see suppose we shall see i didn't know this but also uh i guess the guy that made these tweets was also in a christian metal band that used music in killing floor 2 Uh, and had some rather interesting lyrics around uh, those songs. <laughs> you can look them up if you so desire. So yeah, that's that. That's how that goes. And then I'm fair for the game devs. Um, yes and yes. It's a it's a tricky situation. In a lot of ways that I think, uh, you know, will be kind of on an individual level on if you're going to play them or not. Luckily, I don't play any of those games, so I don't have to make a decision. I just keep not playing their games and, you know, we're good to go. It's easy for me. But for everyone else, it is a decision you'll have to make. What else do we get? Uh, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim has shipped and sold 200,000 copies in Japan. Is that a lot? Question mark. I don't really know much about like Japan game sales, but I guess it is if they decide to put it out there. What else do we got? <laughs> Four hours ago, PlayStation has announced that the PlayStation Now games for September include Tekken 7, Final Fantasy 7, Windbound, and Killing Floor 2. <laughs> oh, goody. I wonder if PlayStation is catching shit for this. Let us find out. Yeah, they're kind of catching some shit. Kind of catching some shit there. A little bit. Just a little bit. I wonder if they'll do anything or say anything about it. They've got a big uh, a big week this week with that Sony showcase happening on uh, Thursday. We'll see. Eurogamer.net uh, is reporting that the Stardew Valley creator, uh, Concerned Ape, 
doesn't know if there will be another update as he is focused on his next game. Do we know anything about his next game? And what it is? Hmm, doesn't say. He doesn't say. I think it's probably going to be a racing simulator. They're going to call it uh, Paradise Colon Burnout. It'll be nice and big. It'll be nice and big. What else is there? What? There's a Kotaku.com feature that is entitled Porno Hustlers of the Atari Age. The newly unearthed history behind one of the most offensive video games ever made. What? Oh, there's a game on the Atari 2600 called Custer's Revenge. I'm not going to go into it, but it sounds like it's a little rough. Jesus. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's keep on scrolling, see if there's anything else here. I saw that Critical Role announced that uh, they're going to be in the new Life is Strange game. That the main character is going to be a critter or something like that. Kind of interesting. I guess. If that's something that interests you. Oh, and then uh, I fucking forgot this news that came out. Uh, was this Saturday evening? Um, we covered it on Friday. Uh, Sony has made an update regarding Horizon Forbidden West on the PS4 and PS5. They have removed the $10 difference between the two versions, I believe. Here's the full statement from Jim Ryan. Thursday was to be a celebration of Horizon Forbidden West and the amazing team at Gorilla uh, working to deliver it on February 18th, 2022. However, it's abundantly clear that the offerings we confirmed in our pre-order kickoff missed the mark. Last year, we made a commitment to free, or sorry, to deliver free upgrades for our cross-gen launch titles, which included Horizon Forbidden West. While the pandemic's profound impact pushed for uh, Ben West out to the launch window we initially envisioned, We'll stand by our offer. Players who purchase Horizon for Ben West on PlayStation 4 will be able to upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version for free. I also want to confirm today that moving forward, PlayStation first party exclusive cross gen titles, newly releasing on PS4 and PS5, both digital and physical, will offer a $10 USD digital upgrade option from PS4 to PS5. This will apply to the next God of War and Gran Turismo 7 and any other exclusive cross-gen PS4 and PS5 uh, title published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's kind of interesting that he mentioned these two titles. I think we're going to see God of War on Thursday. 
And I think we're going to see Gran Turismo 7 on Thursday. That seems oddly uh, circumstantial for him to mention those two. For me, the copium is strong. I think we're going to see God of War and Gran Turismo 7 on Thursday at the Sony showcase that is 40 minutes long, beginning at, I believe, 4 p.m. Eastern, which we'll be covering. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. I don't even know, like, what? Man. That has got me some kind of excited. What do you, I mean, what does that trailer even look like? I don't know. What if he's in like uh, some other... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, read the fine print, says chat. To upgrade an eligible PS4 game on disc to the digital PS5 version, you will need a PS5 console with a disc drive. PS4 game disc can't be used with the PlayStation 5 digital edition. Oh, that sucks. Are people upset about that? I mean, I, that makes sense, I guess. I wonder if they just put that there so that someone didn't fucking like go to Twitter and just like start going crazy, you know? Yeah, I don't, I think that's, I think that's fine. Okay. No, we're not doing this. I can't sit on the mixer. This is a professional news broadcast. You can't sit on the mixer. Can't. Oh, God, now the dog's here. Chad, Chad, hold on. Hold on. Okay, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I had to go join the great war of cat versus dog. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Sorry about that. Luna decided to what? Barry, what the hell? Barry, you've broken everything. Well, that's the news, guys. We've broken everything. We can't move on from this story. It's all fucked. I don't, I honestly don't know what the hell's going on. There's a brand new one here. Well, that's the news stories, guys. I don't know if there's anything else. I can't go back to full screen. Is this an OBS issue? All right, OBS. Fucking weirdo. Fucking weirdo. What else do we have here? Not too much. Trailer time's probably going to be a little bit lackluster today as well. It is a national holiday here in the U.S., so that probably has something to do with it.
Yeah. Chad, is there anything else uh, news related that we should go over? Last call. Last call. Last call. Going once. Going twice. That's the news, chat. That's the news. A little bit short. It's Monday. It's a holiday. I get it, like I said. But, uh, yeah. That'll do it. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have more news and uh, probably more trailers. Wednesday, we might... Uh, maybe I'll do JPNM before drop frames. I'm really wanting to get into... Uh, Tales of Arise Wednesday. So, might just do that. We'll see. Anyways, thank you for watching. Feel free to do all the stuff you know you need to do. Secret word of the day is syrup. A little bit of uh, syrup right there. You got it? Great. Thank you for watching. We will see you tomorrow, or maybe we'll see you a little bit later on for trailer time. See you then. Bye-bye.